Hello everyone and welcome to our channel Homeopathy World. I am Dr. Samina and today I am going to start a new series of anatomy discussions. So in this series I am going to take you on a journey of human anatomy using the very renowned B.D. Chaurasya handbook of human anatomy. So as you can see this book is 8th edition and this is volume 1. So we are going to start from volume 1 chapter 1 human anatomy by B.D. Chaurasya and that is the upper limb. So each episode or each video there will be a specific chapter and that will be broken down into various concepts and clear explanations and also some illustrations. If you are not able to view this entire video you can also go to our podcast in YouTube music where you can just listen to this particular video while doing whatever work you are doing. So if you are too busy to watch, you can just listen to these podcasts. Also at the end of this video, I am going to give you notes for this chapter. So stay tuned to know how I am going to give you these notes. So let's get started. So this is the anatomy book volume 1. This is the 8th edition. So if you are referring some other edition, make sure that you go through all the changes in that edition. So let's go to the first chapter. Okay, so this is the first chapter. The first chapter is introduction. So for better viewing experience, I'm going to zoom out the pages so that you can view better. So in introduction, it is mentioned that as we all know that most of the animals are quadrupeds like cows and dogs and we humans are bipedal. So each limb is made up of three segments. So the basal segment or girdle is nothing but this particular part this is known as a girdle then we have the hanging part or the free part okay now this free part is divided into three individual parts so first is this part which is the proximal part then we have this part which is the middle part and then we have this part which is the distal part okay so the girdle is something which attaches the limb to the axial skeleton so as you can see the limb is attached with the girdle to the axial skeleton so here the body is nothing but axial skeleton and the limb is attached with the girdle to the axial skeleton now the distal segment that is this part as we all know carries five digits. However the evolution of erect posture has given the function of weight bearing to the lower limbs. So the function of weight bearing is given to the lower limbs. Thus upper limbs especially the hands have become free. The hand has become free and is become more for the manipulative skills. Okay, so because of this particular girdle, there is more mobility to the shoulder. Okay, wide range of mobility to the shoulder. The whole upper limb works as a jointed lever and it is hand is working as a grasping tool. The hand, the five digits are working as a grasping tool. Okay, so all these functions are the complex functions under the control of the brain and the unique position of the man as master mechanic of the animal world is because of the skilled movement if there were no skilled movements we would have been similar to the animals so basically our skilled movements make us different from those of the animals now if you see the homologous parts of the limb that means the upper limb is very similar to the lower limb okay so we have to understand that the shoulder girdle in the upper limb is very similar to the hip girdle in the lower limb. Similarly, shoulder joint is similar to hip joint. Arm with humerus is similar with thigh with femur. And elbow joint is similar to knee joint. And forearm with radius and ulna is nothing but leg with tibia and fibula. And wrist joint is similar to ankle joint. And also hand with carpus, metacarpus and five digits. Here you can see metacarpal bones metacarpal bones and phalanges is nothing but tarsus metatarsus and five digits 
okay so the part of upper limb so basically we have gone through the different sections now we'll see what are the actual name of these parts so this particular part that we were calling the girdle is nothing but the shoulder region next is the arm okay it is also known as brachium okay next is the forearm which is known as antibrachium anti means before okay so forearm before arm so it is antibrachium brachium and antibrachium okay and lastly the hand is also known as manus okay so how many parts are there we have basically four parts in the upper limb the shoulder region the arm or brachium the forearm and the hand or manus so here it is shoulder region the brachium the antibrachium or the forearm and manus or hand view this picture clearly even if you are not taking screenshot that is provided in the notes in the description below so let's move on so the same thing these parts are divided in a table now okay so let's see first we were discussing shoulder region right so let's see the shoulder region so in shoulder region there are divisions like the pectoral region the axilla and the scapular region now let's see the pectoral region so in front of the chest whatever your in the shoulder region whatever is in the front of the chest that is known as the pectoral region okay so pectoral is nothing but the front of the chest axilla is nothing but armpit that we all know and scapular region is nothing but the back of the chest here as you can see there are two bones involved one and two so which are these bones clavicle and scapula these are the two bones involved and joints are sternoclavicular means the clavicular sterno joint so the clavicle where it meets the sternum okay that joint and acromioclavicular joint so where the acromion meets the clavicle that joint okay so this here is a clavicle for those who don't know this is the clavicle clavicle bone this is the scapula okay this bigger bone long bone is humerus this bone to your thumb side is radius and towards your little finger is ulna and then you have carpal bones metacarpal bones and phalanges i hope you understood what is the shoulder region shoulder region is nothing but it comprises of pectoral region axillary region and scapular region pectoral region is nothing but the front of the chest axilla is nothing but the armpit and scapular region is nothing but the back of the chest now let's move on to the second important region that is the upper arm has no subdivisions and it includes only the humerus bone okay and here you can see arm or upper arm is nothing but the brachium and it includes only the humerus bone okay and the joint is nothing but shoulder joint so we have only one joint here okay so this is the joint that we need to focus and that is the shoulder joint moving on forearm so forearm nothing but antibrachium and what do we have here we have two bones here radius and ulna and the joints will be elbow joint and radio ulna joint so here you can see this joint elbow joint okay elbow and the another joint that we have to focus is this joint here can you see so this is the radio ulnar joint moving on the next section is hand and hand consists of wrist 
the entire hand and the five digits okay so the wrist is made up of the carpal bones and there are entirely eight carpal bones that leads to our wrist joint so this is the joint here okay let me change the color so that you can see see this this here is the wrist joint then we have the intercarpal joints and the carpo metacarpal joints that is for the metacarpus and the phalanges okay and then there is intermetacarpal joints metacarpopharyngeal joints and the proximo distal interpharyngeal joints so basically you don't have to remember this entire thing what is more important for you is that there are four regions shoulder arm forearm and hand shoulder brachium antibrachium and manus okay so this is important then the subdivision is important subdivision is shoulder is divided into pectoral region axillary region and scapular region and then in upper arm there is no region that forearm there is no region and in hand there is wrist hand and the five digits of phalanges okay so this is how this entire thing is divided i hope you have understood if there is any uh, issues or if you haven't understood anything you can comment in the comment section okay so the same thing what is given in this particular table is described over here so so we are not going to go through that so let's move on an evolution we also don't need to understand the evolution because it is not going to be asked so let's move on see here we have the start again so let's break this down again so first we label all the bones here so this is the clavicle this is the scapula then we have humerus ulna and to the thumb side we have the radius then we have the carpal bones then we have the metacarpal bones and then the phalanges okay now we have labeled this now let's move on and divide these into sections so this particular region is called the shoulder region so let's label this shoulder region then we have the arm or brachium then we have the forearm or antibrachium and then we have the hand or manus which is divided into these sections okay so i hope by this particular image it is understood what are the different sections so here you can see there is a line of force transmission so force when you hold anything in your hand it first goes to your hand then the force goes to the wrist then to the radius then to ulna then to humerus and then to shoulder joint and then to scapula and then to clavicle and then to the sternum and then the axial skeleton so this is how the force works the line of force is this so you should know the line of force okay now moving on this is something which is important how to study anatomy okay it is given in the introduction but here i have made chart over here so whenever you are studying anatomy you need to remember these particular things that you have to study each region whatever region whatever part of the body it is you have to study in reference with general features of the skin superficial fascia and its contents deep fascia and its contents muscles joints blood vessels nerves and bone so whenever you are going to write any answer all these factors have to be considered while writing your answer okay so this is very important and for practical purposes we'll need region and surface marking dissection purpose 
so for practical purposes we will need region and surface marking that is for dissection purpose and otherwise we will need all these things okay so let's move on see let's see what are the frequently asked question make a flow chart of force line transmission that we have understood tabulate the homologous part that also we have understood and enumerate the subdivisions of shoulder region joint related to the forearm what are the joints related to forearm so shoulder region arm and forearm so forearm may we have two joints what are the two joints first is the elbow joint right and another is the radio ulnar joint let's see if we are correct so in forearm we have the elbow joint and the radio ulnar joint okay so next name the carpal bones in order so this we haven't gone through yet we haven't named the carpal bones in order and then we have joints of the hand so what are the joints of the hand hand is the fourth region manus okay so what are the joints of the hand there are many joints of the hand so let's see okay so joints of the hand will be all these joints so all these joints from here to here will be your answer joints of hand so we have intercarpal joint that is between the carpal bones then we have carpo metacarpal joint that is between the carpus and the metacarpus bones then we have intermetacarpal joints that is between the metacarpal bones then we have metacarpo phalangeal joints that is between the metacarpus and the phalanges and there is a proximal and distal interphalangeal joints so we have intercarpal intermetacarpal interphalangeal then we have carpo metacarpal metacarpo pharyngeal okay so these are the joints of the hand now they have also asked for all the bones name of the bones okay so name the carpal bones in order so this one more question has asked name the carpal bones in order this particular question and all these other questions will be answered in the notes that are given in the description below so in the description you will find a link to the google form open that google form enter all the required details and then you can download the notes for this chapter that is chapter number 1 and next is chapter number 2 which we will study in the next lecture thank you very much and keep watching our videos and also do subscribe to our youtube music podcast in which you can hear the audio for this particular video without watching the video you can just hear the audio and understand this chapter in detail okay thank you